Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another edition of NASCAR Chase for the Cup 2005. This is a premiere that will be going up, I believe, on Sunday of the Talladega race. So hopefully you guys enjoy that and watch the predictions video. But for now, we're going to get into the action. It's going to be fun. It's the Chevy 400 at the Richmond Raceway, our next short track race of the season. And it's the final race before the All-Star race that will be live streamed later on during the course of the week following this premiere so like share and subscribe we got daily nascar content on the channel and uh, hopefully you guys enjoy this race today jimmy johnson will be starting on the pole with ryan newman outside front row green flag is in the air and we are underway at the richmond raceway two by two through the first couple sets of corners Johnson qualified on the pole, but a little bit of an adjustment change from the race into qualifying. He slides up the track, but so does Brendan Gaughan in the 77, who now has Dale Jarrett underneath him off turn four. Jimmy Johnson will leave lap one to give himself five bonus points. Johnson comes in third in the standing, 32 points back of the points leader. He has not led the points through the first 11 completed races. Had a lot of stellar runs, only one finish outside the top 10, and that would have ended the Daytona 500 to start the season. And in that race, he finished outside the top 30, and that is why he is taking so long to try and claw himself back to the front if he wants to win this regular season championship. He's going to have to get going, only 11 races to go after this one. only two points away from being second place in the point standings but he's 32 behind the leader kevin harvick has jumbled up to second place now richmond is a track that we ran very very well at in nascar chase for the cup 2005 in the cup series there and in the bush and the truck series in this game at richmond as well we put on some dominating performances so i'd like to think that jimmy johnson's gonna have a great shot to win here today at richmond Kevin Harvick pushes way up the racetrack. Johnson going to try to control his own pace here in the early going of this one. 400 laps around this three-quarter mile racetrack. Nicknamed the Action Track. And I'm sure we're going to be seeing some short track action at its finest with these NASCAR Next Cup Series cars today. This is a race we will end up making some jump cuts throughout, as you've seen on the premieres up to this point. But you will not miss any of the major action throughout the course of this race. Including the start that Kevin Harvick in second place just doesn't look like he's really able to contend with Jimmy Johnson. He hasn't really put a lot of pressure on him in the opening seven laps at least in this race. Now to lap eight at the start finish line. Johnson's already out to about a half a second lead over Harvick into turn one. For whatever reason, these NASCAR eSports games, Richmond's like my best track. But for those of you that know me in the NASCAR Heat Series, Richmond is one of our worst tracks. That and Kentucky seem to be our worst tracks in the NASCAR Heat Series, and just never seem to have a whole lot of luck here. It's kind of a nice change of pace in the EA Sports games, and of course, in these early EA games, Kentucky was not in those games, even though it was raced in the Bush Series and the Truck Series at that time. It was not raced in the Cup Series, and still was not in this game. It won't be for quite some time in these classic game playthroughs. Running the Pride of America car for the second straight race as well. We debuted this in the last race on the channel at the Auto Club Speedway. A thriller in the Auto Club 500. Jimmy Johnson coming off a third place finish, got passed on the last lap, was battling late with Matt Kenseth for the win. Kenseth ended up blowing an engine coming to about four laps to go. Johnson had from there about a 1.3 second lead that he got ran down in those final four laps. 
of the second and third place cars at the time. They both got around him on the final lap. Johnson had to settle in for a third place finish. Definitely trying to come back and make his way to victory lane once again this season. Been a few races since his last win. And a one second right now. Over the second place race car, who is still Kevin Harvick, and Harvick's even got the third place car on the back. Richmond is exactly where the regular season finale will be in race 24 of 34. This is our first trip of two to the action track. Alternate through the different camera angles for the first time here today, very early on in the race. this for about the next eight laps or so from when we started. Definitely spaced out at the front of the field. They have not gotten the lap traffic yet and it will still be a little while until then. We have not raced at Richmond in the Cup Series yet so not sure exactly how far we can go on fuel with these Gen 4 cars at this track. I'd have to assume it's going to be right about 100 laps. If not, maybe a little bit more on the fuel tank. And if we can make it to at least lap 100 each time, we're looking at about a three pit stop race today at minimum. Get a good look at the hood of this Pride of America paint scheme here for Jimmy Johnson. Likely end up running this car for the Coke 600 as well. Problems for Hendrick Motorsports early on. Brian Vickers has already gone behind the pit wall, or at least was on his way to pit road that time through. Up in heavy smoke, an engine failure for one of the four Hendrick Chevys in the early going of the Chevy 400. This is definitely one of the home races for Chevrolet this season. So you'd have to assume... And as a manufacturer, they would like to get at least one of their cars in victory lane at the end of the day. Johnson's setting away early. Kevin Harvick has been running in second place for most of the race early on as well. Two Chevys out at the front of the field. One for Hendrick Motorsports and one for Richard Childress Racing. Gonna have to keep an eye on Harvick. Or I should say Jimmy Johnson, rather, as this race progresses just to see how the rest of the Hendrick cars are going to Stay. Obviously, I mentioned Johnson because he's leading the race, and of course, we're driving at Johnson for the season. But even Jeff Gordon, Terry Labonte, going to have to keep an eye on them. Tough break for Vickers, though. He was just outside the cutoff line coming into this race. Still has about half the regular season to try and get back up there, but he is uh, running out of time. I should say we'll be just past halfway through the regular season after this race. We'll have 12, or we will be exactly halfway. We'll have 12 races down, 12 to go still following this one race is definitely quick and but or i should say the race but the season is definitely starting to click away all of a sudden even though we did start it a couple months ago we kind of do these cup series races on this game kind of few and far between it seems like we'll be seeing a lot more of those coming up once we finish up the nascar heat five content as we still await the debut of NASCAR 21 Ignition. I've kind of done the math in my head that we should be able to get to the end of the regular season or right 
close to the end of the regular season by the time the next NASCAR game debuts, NASCAR 21 Ignition, then we'll have to take another break from this game again, um, at least for a few weeks, making sure that we keep up with the NASCAR 21 Ignition debut that game. But Vickers, the only driver out of the race early on, quickly approaching lap 30. Last lap of the race so far, 21.801, or sorry, 21.759. The last lap for Johnson is a 21.801. But he is definitely pulling away here and has the fastest car in the early going, a 1.7 second lead. We'll have to see how he's going to fare through the lap traffic. He's definitely going to want to be patient. But while there is no lap traffic, Currently close enough to Jimmy Johnson. We'll take our first jump cut of the race at lap 30. You're watching the Chevy 400 on the NASCAR Nextel Cup Series side of things. NASCAR Chase for the Cup 2005 live on KRC. We are back in the Chevy 400 at Richmond. Jimmy Johnson continues to lead, and he has stretched that lead out to about 3.8 to 3.9 seconds at lap 71. Has obviously entered lap traffic recently as well, and has only made contact once on the racetrack to this point with the driver or the wall, and it was with Johnny Sutter, the rookie, who tried to crowd him. Sutter was trying to hang on to the lead lap a little bit earlier on in this run, about 20 laps ago or so, and Johnson made a little contact with Sauter's left rear, but that was it. And Brian Vickers still the only driver out of the race due to that engine failure we had seen in the first 30 laps. We'll stay here until we follow through the first set of pit stops in the race today. Hit halfway on fuel at lap 59, so easily can make it over 100 laps for these drivers in this field. So that also says that we are going to be able to make it on three stops if, say, this race did go caution-free. You don't expect a short track race to go caution-free, but I guess you never know. NASCAR Thunder 2004, we did have a caution-free race at Richmond before, so maybe we could have one here at NASCAR Chase for the Cup 2005. So, all, so far off to a pretty clean and fast start. Johnson looking to dominate and have a max points day. Stretch the lead out to four seconds now off turn four this time. Lap 75. Still long ways to go today at Richmond. These laps are definitely going by quick. You can get three laps in in just over a minute. And with this fast race pace to start, making for a short day for us. Leading you guys up to that Talladega race later on. We're doing live commentary for that race. If you are watching this premiere, that will be a live stream while doing the live commentary. First time we've done a race at Talladega for it. It'll be the first super speedway race. We tried to do the Xfinity race at Daytona about a month ago, but Unfortunately, uh, that we only got 20 laps in and then it rained, so there was only 20 laps of recording, so I just ended up deleting the uh, the stream being so we only got 20 laps, and I wasn't able to do it the next day because I had to work during the day the next day. Elliot Sadler going to go a lap down. Jamie McMurray about to go a lap down. I think Casey Mears is already one lap down. He's in danger of going a second lap down in his second season with Chip Ganassi Racing. Jeff Burton right in front of him, last car on the lead lap. Terry Labonte already lapped down as well. Ooh, Jamie McMurray got really tight, went up the racetrack into turn one. And he may end up getting passed, not by Sadler, but the car who was behind Sadler got past him. Johnson got really loose and overdrove turns three and four, got up into the side of Jeff Burton. 
That's the second time he's made contact with anybody today. That time it was on Jimmy, though. Let's go over to the corner. I guess it's easy to do when you're on 80 lap older tires on a short track. Everybody's slipping and sliding at this point in the run. Even on a track which at this point would be on, only on its fourth year with this surface. Still somewhat freshly repaid. Last repave at Richmond was in 2000. The first race on the new repave, I should say, was in 2000. Jeff Green in the 43. Don't get passed by Jimmy Johnson. Johnson pulls up clear off turn four. Green lets him go. Bobby Gordon, Bobby Labani up here, and one of the fantasy drivers right behind them. Not sure who that is. Fantasy driver is it's Mike Murphy in the 199. Murphy trying to get around Bobby Labonte for position. It looks like he is underneath him. And he'll make the pass. Labonte will stay high for Johnson to make his way in. Jimmy with that interstate battery battery Chevrolet one lap down as well. Former champion is Bobby Labonte back in 2000, the very year this track ran its first race on this current repave. Easily gets around Mike Murphy and Robbie Gordon through turns one and two now as well. A lot of clean air ahead of Jimmy Johnson coming up. It'll be interesting to see exactly when some of these drivers decide to pit. I'm sure we'll see some drivers short pit right as soon as they hit lap 100. It's definitely risky on a short track, but five second lead already for Johnson, especially if you're in second place looking to eat into that lead. If you can get 100 lap pressure tires for 15 to 20 laps before Johnson pits, you'll definitely start to cut into that lead. Tires will still wear with this being a short track even though it doesn't have that many races on the surface. I can't believe I have over 7,000 skill points. We're not even quarter of the way through the race yet. Let go unlock some more fantasy tracks. That way we can... Get all those ran in our custom schedule season when the time comes for the Cup Series. There goes the right front tire now into the yellow. Lap 88 off turn four. Well, the driver's dealing with lap traffic. Johnson's got really the cleanest air in front of him since the start of the race before he hit lap traffic right around lap 40. Broke through the first half of them. Now quickly out to a six-second lead. Quarter tank of fuel left at lap 90 now for Johnson. I don't think he's quite going to make it to lap 120. Probably guesstimate 116, 117 will be when he'll hit pit road. He'll easily pass lap 100. And the further he can take these first two runs of the race, that when he takes that third and final stop, he can split the run in half if he so chooses. Though, again, with this being a short track and having a comfortable six-second lead, I don't think Johnson's really looking at trying to short pit at all. If he can help it, the last thing you want to do is get trapped a lap down. Because even though he, I mean, a 6.3 second lead is not gigantic by any means. And especially on a short track when you can pit, and you're easily going to lose a lap anyway. All it takes is one bad caution with that happening and Johnson's in a hole. He's, he's got a fast race car and he would have most of the race to make it up as of right now. But you still don't want to put yourself in that situation. Plus, you throw... The likelihood of leading the most laps out the window, even though you've led the first 92 up to this point. You get underneath Mark Martin off turn two. Martin stays high. Johnson rolls right around him in three and four. 
Mark Martin hasn't had that great of a season, but it does seem like his best runs have been on the short tracks. He had a decent run at Martinsville and Bristol. Now at Richmond, but he's already a lap down in the first 100 laps. 400 lap race on tap for today. That's in the middle of the corner a little bit. Great job keeping it off the 133 to his outside that time, though. An eight lap break of not having any lap traffic around him was pretty nice. Right back into the action once again. Kyle Petty was the very first lap car we had lapped very early in this race already, almost 60 laps ago. With my goodness, now they look up at the upper left-hand corner of the screen. We're at lap 99, so lap 100 will be this time by. Even quicker for you guys with the jump cuts. That's one benefactor of not having any cautions up to this point. Plus the fact that Johnson's had the fastest car in the field, and he doesn't have to worry about anybody Riding his tailpipe on restart, trying to get around him and causing more drivers to get right back into this race. Looks like Johnson can control his own destiny as long as the thing stays green. Of course, his team has to have some good pit stops. Johnson himself going to have to get onto a kind of a tricky pit road to get onto without speeding. Make sure he'll have to get there. Now, I will say with these EA Sports games, every single track is 70 miles per hour on the pit road speed. So when you go to the shorter tracks, it's a lot easier to not speed and get onto pit road. But the only reason this is a tough pit road to get onto is just because of how narrow it is. The bright side is you don't have to take a deep dive off the exit of a corner. You're pretty much already there. But you do have to start breaking pretty early getting into three because the pit entrance is right in the middle of turns three and four. I wouldn't say directly in the middle, but it's... Up three quarters of the way through the corner. It's definitely not all the way to the exit. It's kind of a blind pit road. It's around the 123. Kirk Bush going to go a lap down. He's been very good on the short track races this year. He had a great run at Bristol this season. Almost got his first win. Top 10 at Martinsville as well. Between him, Mark Martin, even Kenseth's love laps in those races. Three drivers have been very good for Rosh Fenway on the short tracks this year. I'd say primarily Kenseth and Kurt Busch, but Martin's had his good runs at times as well. Eighth of a tank left of fuel for Johnson, lap 105. We have not seen anybody take their scheduled pit stop yet. Who knows, maybe Johnson will have to pit before everybody else as well. I guess that is certainly possible. Man drifted all the way up the track. Very slight contact with Matt Kenseth in the middle of three and four. Kenseth tried to get him room. Johnson struggling with grip now. Didn't really overdrive it because of his own self. Just over 100 laps on his tires, and the car is just wanting to get a little bit tighter and tighter as this run goes on. Can't quite get to the bottom that time in three and four. So definitely once we hit that 100 lap mark, it is tough to rotate the car to the center of the corner. Try 
Tried to get out of the gas a little bit earlier that time, then it almost got loose on him. Hamlin's definitely pretty wonky. Tony Stewart, last car in the lead lap, will come to pit road. Johnny Sauter going to go a second lap down. No contact with Jimmy Johnson like the first time. Those two had been close to one another on the racetrack. And Glover was in second place. If it was Kevin Harvick, you can see Harvick just coming out of the pit lane. But uh, whether it was him or somebody else, they have already picked. Because now the lead's up over 14 seconds when it was at about an eight and a half to nine second lead for Johnson when the green flag pit stop started. So they'll definitely start cutting back into that lead until Johnson hits pit road. Jimmy going to take this run as far as he possibly can. And that way he'll have a perfect gauge. A little contact with a few cars coming out of the pit lane. Big checkup. Oh, car on the wall. Now on the tire barrier, Scott Riggs is going around in lap 109. Contact with Jimmy Johnson as well. They were nearly stopped. And then he, oh my goodness. Big hit for Scott Riggs and Robbie Gordon into the tire barrier at the front of pit road. They got into one another, and when they came back up off the racetrack, Johnson made contact with Riggs. He couldn't get out of the way. Now, even if he didn't hit Scott Riggs, I think Robbie Gordon would have ended up in the tire barrier anyway, the angle he was running at. But that is going to trap a lot of drivers a lap down. Now whoever was on the lead lap will pit under the yellow. Therefore, those other drivers will have to take the wave around, but most of them are probably two laps down. They're only going to get one of their two laps back. So they're definitely going to have to challenge on the restart. And they're going to have about 5 to 10 lap older tires on top of it as well. So our first caution at lap 109. And so the rest of the pit stops will be made under yellow for those leaders. Yeah, Johnson doesn't feel guilty about that. They just kind of... I mean, you can see the contact well before entering the corner with Robbie Gordon and Scott Riggs. And there was this other contact with Harvick and some of the lap cars in front of him on the high side of the racetrack trying to avoid and Johnson couldn't avoid in time. It was very minimal contact to his inside, but it was enough to turn Riggs into the barrier with him already running close to it. Oh my goodness, what was that? <laughs> Green flag back in the air. Johnson fighting for the bottom on the restart, accidental contact with his teammate. Jimmy did lose the lead off of pit road to Casey Kane. Kane got five burn points under the yellow for leading those laps. Johnson right back to the lead, though. So our first restart of the race here today at Richmond. Jared's got some damage to the back of his number 88 UPS Ford. Johnson gets in front of him off the exit of turn two, and Jimmy going to try to set sail now as he's back in the clean air and back in the race lead. He has led every green flag lap so far today, but unfortunately... He has not led every lap now because of that caution. Casey Kane winning the race off the pit road. Johnson going to try to hopefully go back to his dominance. That is not a caution he wanted. Even though it did trap a lot of fast cars a lap down, it did give some of these other drivers a chance once again. And uh, Casey Kane now has made his way through the lap traffic. Harvick trying to follow him. Harvick, we know, is at least one lap down. Not sure exactly how many cars are in the lead lap right now either. Well, definitely a very different circumstance and a very different situation, excuse me. Not sure who was in the free pass position. Of course, we don't get indicators of that. Like we do with the current NASCAR video games. Would have been the first season with the free pass to be available. That's a quickly pulling away from Casey Kane. Right back out into this clean air again.
We'll take a short break from the action once again. Won't miss any of the intensity. You're watching the NASCAR Chase for the Cup 2005 video game, the Chevy 400 at Richmond for the Cup Series, live on KRC. Welcome back to the Chevy 400 at Richmond. It's now a 2.8 second lead for Jimmy Johnson as he has just entered lap traffic, courting the zero of Ward Burton. Another lap down, now working his way under the generated driver in the 151, the 22 of Scott Wimmer, rookie right in front of him as well. Side-by-side -side lap traffic as Johnson tries to make his way now into turn three. Three wide for the first time today with the 48 car down low. And they merged side-by-side -side off the exit of turn four, so they were able to make it that time at least. Johnson has still led every green flag lap of the race so far. Casey Kane led the only other laps under the caution. And just made contact with Mark Martin getting into the corner. That was pretty close as well. Still just over half the race remains. Anything could happen. Johnson trying to back up turns three and four to get around Ricky Craven in the 32, and he will. Comes under the 109. Mike Murphy's making some moves in this 199 car right now. Trying to block Jimmy Johnson off in the process. Johnson underneath Biffle in the Granger 16 car. Johnson could not find his way around Murphy in the 199 currently. Pitch it off the exit of turn four and cut to the inside, and he will. Second place, Casey Kane is slowly cut back into this lead for Jimmy Johnson. Kane's had a good stretch of runs as of late, still searching for that first career win. some contact off the exit of turn two as the lap cars further up in the distance saw some sparks fly that's the first time tonight won't be the last either as you can see jimmy johnson pretty much kept his car fairly clean We haven't seen Scott Riggs or Robbie Gordon since the caution, although we do see Robbie Gordon off in the distance up ahead. Haven't quite ran into Scott Riggs yet. I'm sure he's not too far away from Gordon. Those two having the worst of the damage during that first and only caution that flew back at lap 109. It's been green flag ever since. We'll have to wait and see if we get any cautions in the middle of green flag pit stops once again. Have to assume it may be a possibility. Halfway on fuel. It doesn't really look like Robbie Gordon had too much damage, even though he should have had a little bit. Especially on the front of his race car. It's going to be unfortunate if Scott Riggs has shown as a rival because of that because he came up into me, but oh well. I guess those things happen from time to time in these EA Sports games. Definitely a rookie mistake that brought out that caution for Scott Riggs. 
pull it up onto the racetrack for a guard. I, I don't know why those guys decided not to pit. The only thing I could think of is they made contact. They got out of shape, and they were probably going to speed on the pit road, so they made the decision to not pit. Tries to pull up a little early there on Johnny Sauter, and that shuffled the 30 car out of line with minimal contact there. Now the 42, Jamie McMurray got underneath him. And makes the pass on Sauter. Alternate through the different camera angles one final time in today's race or the next eight laps as we're approaching the halfway mark. Not too much further away from that point. A little bit of break in the lap traffic right now for the race leader in the 48. Johnson's crew had a clean pit stop the first time around under the yellow, but it wasn't fast enough to become the leader. Casey Kane. Is number nine, Everham Dodge race team. Is able to get out in front of him. Oh, Johnson in the wall for the first time today now, getting into turn three. A little out of shape there. I wonder if some of that might have started off the exit of turn two. Not entirely sure, but... A little too close to the wall on corner entry, that's all. Making that cut back down to the bottom. Kane was able to close just a slight bit, but being four seconds back and a lot of lap cars between the top two, it's going to be tough for Casey Kane to catch Jimmy Johnson during this green flag run until we get to those green flag pit stops at least. Oh, car in the wall, turn two. We stay green. Couldn't tell who it was that got into the wall, but luckily we stay green. Far enough, far enough up ahead of the 48 of Johnson as well that not only we couldn't tell who it was, but luckily we're far enough back that it didn't cause anything. And now oh, we have trouble on the inside of the track. The 133 has blown an engine. Johnson just slammed into the back of the 191 and now Jimmy Johnson's got a heavy damage on the right front of his race car. And all of a sudden Casey Kane's 2.3 seconds back of the race leaders. Nowhere to go that time for Casey, or for uh, Jimmy Johnson rather. No caution. Lap after somebody got into the wall. I wouldn't be surprised if that driver May have gotten into the wall and that caused his car to not make it. 191 now just trying to block Johnson even though he's already one lap down. Probably upset at Johnson after the contact even though Johnson didn't get checked up in time. Wasn't expecting the field to check up. The car was trying to get to the inside of the racetrack and out of the way. Brendan gone. Pitching Johnson down. Johnson will get underneath. Gone. Make the clean pass on him. Now he's underneath his teammate Terry Levine. Hopefully they didn't knock too much speed out of the 48. Definitely going to have to repair that damage when he comes on to pit road to make his second stop of the day. Saw Scott Riggs over there as well. It doesn't look like he's got a lot of damage either. I'm just shocked that neither him or Robbie Gordon look like they have that much damage. 141 get a cross back over on Jimmy Johnson through turns one and two and make the pass. That's Ray Parker. That 141 car, Johnson going to try to get back underneath him to the inside into three and four with a bit of a crossover to put Parker back a lap down again. Likely a second lap down. Not entirely sure on that. 
Business is picking up now. Johnson sliding away again from Casey Kane, who struggles to get by lap cars, and he's back to three seconds off the lead again. But it was 4.3 seconds, and then it was down to 2.3. Back to 3.0 at lap 188. We'll stay here because I'd have to assume that green flag pit stops will be starting up for the second time today. For some drivers, at least, they pitted under green. Some of them pitted under that first caution as it came out in the middle of green flag pit stops. And we could see our second yellow of the race in that stretch as well. It's what led to the first set of cautions was pit road entry. And we may have, we have even commented even before those first stops that this is a tough pit road to get onto, and that contact between Scott Riggs and Robbie Gordon obviously led to the yellow. Tim Nemechek going to go lap down. Johnson made his way around him. I will say, though, that Johnson doesn't have the same speed in the race car. Granted, that stack up and the contact cost them time. And maybe some of these other drivers made some adjustments during those first stops to try and keep up with Johnson a little bit better through the lap traffic. In fact, he's only three and a half seconds ahead of the field with pit stops looming in another 30 to 40 laps. He had a nine second lead before the green flag pit stop started after lap 100 on that first green flag run of the race. And he doesn't even have half of that lead this time around. You just tell how much that right front damage has cost them too. Fast slap in the race for Johnson to 21.699. That last lap was a 21.903. Over two tenths of a second slower than his fastest lap. And that fastest lap was at the very beginning of this green flag run after the restart. Back into the 21 eights that time, but still well over, well, I should say just under two tenths of a second slower. You can definitely tell it has made the car tighter immediately, having the damage on the right front. Definitely causing some aero deficiencies, even on a short track. Now, if you're going to have some aero deficiencies, you'd rather them have been at a short track than any other race track. Short tracks don't require quite as much in the aerodynamic department. Really just managing your tires and just trying to get through the grueling long haul of these long lapped races. Don Evans in the 161 car is the next lap car ahead of Johnson now. Approaching lap 200. That will put us at halfway in just a few more laps. These other teams that have practiced with green flag stops, if we do cycle through, the green flag stops all the way through this time around. There's a lot of drivers that still have not made a green flag stop yet, so they have one less one less chance at practice with it. And I did qualify before the race, but I did not practice getting to pit road. Because I didn't practice at all, so really trying to bank on the fact that first time is going to be worked off with no issues. That's unfortunate he didn't have to make a stop under green the first time around, but at some point he'll likely have to do that today. We're halfway home. Officially halfway this time by. We just got to lap 200. Then we'll have 200 laps complete 
start finish line this time around. Johnson takes a deep dive into three as he slides up in front of Kenseth off the exit of turn four. There we go, halfway home. Well, Johnson leading all but a few laps in this race. He's going to clinch the most laps led even before he has to make his second pit stop of the day. So there it is. Jimmy Johnson has clinched the most laps led in today's race now. Casey Kane, the only other leader, though, is in second place, although he is 5.6 seconds off the lead. being in the second half of this one though we'll just have to wait and see what all can all happen and we're going to stay here until we get through those second pit stops in case we do see another caution we won't miss it happen live of this race is looking like it's going to be less than three hours at the rate that we are currently running so that's pretty good for my sake with not having you guys in the chat uh, while I'm actually recording this and again only one caution in the first half of a Richmond race not too bad short track race in general to make it for a quicker race with pace as mentioned at the beginning, and it's already been almost a hundred laps since that first and only yellow. A green at lap 112, 113, so just about at a hundred lap green flag run for the second time today. Working his way to the inside. 151 going to try to squeeze three wide up the middle now. Johnson pulls clear of both those drivers off the exit of turn two. Oh, and now the 151 and Scott Wimmer make contact in turn three and four. The 151 finally pulls clear of Wimmer. They're battle for position. At, at least, I believe now, three laps down between the two of them. If not more. Dale Jarrett, Kurt Busch, Tony Stewart, some faster race cars just up ahead. Jeff Gordon as well in the mix. I know Jared and Gordon are at least one lap down, even before Johnson is making his way back to him again. They're on the worst part of that receiving end of the first yellow. 
That's another Biffle off turn two, and he is rolling now out to an eight-second lead. On Casey Kane, Johnson gets a little loose getting into three. Hangs on to it. A lot of drivers on his high side giving him plenty of room to catch the car and then some. And driving on by these guys with these now. We'll just file back down to the bottom out of his rearview mirror. Well, shaky into three again there. Pulling up in front of the 99 of Jeff Burton. Cut Burton off off turn four to keep him from crossing him over. Johnson underneath the 109 car now into turn one. Kevin Harvey coming out of the pit lane, one of the first drivers to pit yet again. His green flag pit stops are now starting up for the second time today. And we'll see if these drivers can make it through their pit stops this time around. Second of at least three pit stops today that are forthcoming. Those drivers that were able to pit under the yellow obviously not only stayed out longer before the caution, but they got to pit during the yellow, which means those other drivers having to take the wave around. A lot of the drivers you're seeing pit now were also the ones that pitted under the first green flag stint. That's definitely going to watch himself a little bit more here. Raven pulls to the pit road. Johnson went high thinking that might have been the case when he moved to the bottom down the back straight away. Looked like he was a little lower than normal. Which told me he wasn't just trying to pass the 192 that he was going to try to come into the pits. It's a close call earlier in the race and Johnson wants to make sure that it's not going to be quite that close again for his sake as he tries to keep this car as clean as possible. Casey Kane, who was in second place, has come off the pit lane. He'll go a second lap down off turn two as Casey tries to get up the speed in line behind the 48 of Johnson. He's got pressure tires, so he's definitely going to try to get that one lap back. He's back up the speed at this point down the front stretch. Johnson has a one lap lead on the field, but that is because he has yet to make his second pit stop in the race while everybody else who's on the lead lap has pitted their second time. Johnson stayed out in case we get another caution. We have seen one in this race. It was during green flag pit stops the last time. So in case it happens again, he wants to be on the better end of the yellow for the second time. Caution at lap 109, one green at lap 112. Still got more drivers hitting pit road. Oh, man! Johnny Sutter coming in a little high. That was almost the second rookie to make a mistake in this race, avoiding pit road as he almost hit the tire barrier. And I think he actually cut the inside wall into turn one, it looked like, as well. Johnny Sutter's all over the place right now. Johnson going to stay out of the pits here, waiting to see if Johnny Sutter ends up coming in. He may run it out of fuel here before long, and Johnson's got a two-lap lead on the field because, again, everybody has pitted their second time except for Jimmy Johnson and maybe a few lap cars. Well, we're going to have to keep an eye on Johnny Sutter. That was very, very close. I thought he was going to end up in the tire wall. That was the same mistake Scott Riggs made earlier that brought out the first caution. I think he was fortunate that he didn't get pinched like Riggs did earlier. That he was all by himself when it happened and he didn't have a car behind him as well like Robbie Gordon was behind Riggs and had piled into him earlier in the day as well. Lap 127. Johnson going to pit at lap 2 or sorry lap 227. Johnson will stay out one more lap. He'll pit at lap 228. So lap 228 next time by will be when Jimmy Johnson will make his second pit stop of the race. And 
We'll see if he'll cycle back out with the race lead as well. Had an eight second lead when the pit stop started. It was about a second less than what he had the first time around earlier today during the first green flag stops. Tough pit road, his first green flag stop of the day. No problems getting to pit road whatsoever. Coasted on. Full tank of fuel obviously coming. No adjustments. Definitely going to repair that damage on the right front that incurred during the middle of this green flag run. And we'll see what Jimmy Johnson and S48 crew can do during their first pit stop under green flag conditions. Going to have to be a little bit quicker than their pit stop caution under the yellow earlier today. You can see the damage on the right front as they're passing the car. That was occurred on the 199 of Mike Murphy earlier. Or sorry, the 191 car rather earlier in the race. So they buffed it out a little bit. Maybe not completely. And he'll stay on the bottom of the track as he tries to get up to speed. He'll merge his way now into turn number three. In front of the 192 and behind the 24 of Jeff Gordon by a few car lengths. So Johnson gets up to speed at lap 230. He's got about an 8.7 second lead. He actually grew a 7 tenth of a second lead during the pit stops, even after staying out about 7 or 8 laps longer than most of the rest of these cars that had pitted. It's quite shocking. That tells me that, for instance, Casey Kane came out behind or right around some lap traffic, or, you know, vice versa. Maybe the lap traffic came out around him as everybody was cycling out of the pits. We did notice Johnson had a lot of clean air, really, during those green flag pit stops. I think he only really had to pass two or three cars. So that definitely helped Johnson. And he's on the attack quickly getting around Jeff Gordon off turn four. Putting Gordon a second lap down once again. So let's go two laps down. It's definitely a tough hole to get out of. I'm sure we'll see some drivers short pit when that window opens to the end of the race again. Only one more scheduled pit stop. We'll see if we get any more cautions today. If that will force some drivers to maybe pet at other points in this race. And I think we'll take our next jump cut right now after the second set of green flag stops have cycled through. You're watching the Chevy 400. For NASCAR Chase for the Cup 2005 Nextel Cup Series action, Jimmy Johnson leads the way live on KRC. And we are back live, ladies and gentlemen, to the Chevy 400 at Richmond Lap 274, a 400, almost three quarters of the way home. Jimmy Johnson almost out to a 15 second lead over second place driver, who is likely still Casey Kane, but we're not entirely sure. We still are at just the one caution on the race today. And still dealing with lap traffic. Could see some potential final pit stops coming in the next 10 to 15 laps with some people short pitting. I'm sure that is going to be possible as soon as that window opens up to the end of the race. I'm sure some drivers will take try to take advantage and pit early if they can, risking there possibly being a late caution. And caution in the middle of green flag pit stops back at lap 109. Then we cycled through the second set of green flag pit stops about 50 to 60 laps ago smoothly. Still one more pit stop yet to make it to the finish. That's a miss the inside that time for turns three and four. Still a 15 second lead is very, very big to this point for Jimmy Johnson. He definitely is one of the, maybe the only driver in the field that would be okay with this race staying caution free the way it's looking right now. Trying to get around the 151 car. He'll finally get underneath him off the exit of turn four. Going to get underneath Mark Martin now in turns one and two as well. Barry St. Johnson's got through the lap traffic better than anybody else in the race. He is very... I mean, he's made very little contact with anybody in this race. Only six times he has made contact in this race with another driver. And for a short track and almost 300 laps complete on a short track, that is highly impressive. 
It's just the speed this 48 car has underneath the hood. Still, Brian Victor's the only Hendrick Chevy to have a DNF in this race. And one of only two drivers that I've personally seen blow an engine during a green flag run. The three drivers who were involved in that first caution of the race today, I believe, are all still running. I know for a fact that Robbie Gordon and Scott Riggs, we have seen on the track multiple times since then. Sutter trying to pinch Jimmy Johnson down on the racetrack initially, and then once he got underneath and midway through the trial, fully gave him a little bit more room. Two of the times of the six Johnsons made contact, it was with Johnny Sutter. I'd say he's probably been the toughest lap car to pass in this one for Jimmy so far. Johnson last pit at lap 228. So it's going to be quite some time before he makes his final pit stop of the day. Ooh, 161 car got in the wall off the exit of turn four that time. Slipped up the track off the exit of the corner and slapped the outside wall. Stacked up a couple lap cars behind him, but we do continue to stay green as Johnson drives on. 16.2 seconds ahead of second place at the start finish line on a track that you run. About 21 second lap time. So he's got over a three quarter of a track lead over second place. Still led every green flag lap of this race so far. Casey Kane led two or three laps during the caution period after winning the race off the pit road the first time. Green flag pit stop starting at lap 288. Got about three or four cars on pit road as we speak. I'm sure a lot more will be diving off now. Johnson is halfway on fuel through his current fuel run. He can definitely go a little ways yet. What Ricky Rudd, excuse me, one of the drivers made his way into pit road. A lot more lap traffic in front of the 48 of Johnson now. Kevin Harvick is one of those drivers. Craven just took the big left turn onto pit road that time off turn four. And you can see Casey Kane up here, so Kane is not the second place driver. Johnson's got over a 17 second lead, but Kane is not 17 seconds back. He is more than that back off the race lead. 
So I'm not sure who is in second place at this point. Oh, and another car checking up. It's Jeff Gordon who has blown an engine off turn four. Johnson into the back of Mike Murphy and Kevin Harvick. And that is the second Hendrick Chevy to now blow an engine here today. That was right in front of the leader again. The lap car's in front. And that's twice now he's gotten in the back of the 199 of Mike Murphy when that has happened. Same spot, too, right off the exit of turn four. It was very blind. Johnson couldn't see everybody checking up. There's Gordon on the inside of the racetrack trying to lift his way to pit road. Hopefully he'll get there and will stay green. And he has made his way into the pit lane now. So we will continue to stay green at lap 296. Costing Johnson about a second of his lead. And how much more damage is that put on the front bumper of the 48? Second time that's happened. Hopefully it'll be the last. But we still have just over 100 laps to go. Who knows? It might not be the last. into turn one. Murphy trying to pinch him down. Johnson beats him back to the gas off the exit of turn two and slides back up in front of Murphy. I don't know why I called him Murph just a couple seconds ago, but I did. <laughs> Referring to Mike Murphy, of course. Harvick trying to block. I believe he is one lap down. He's trying not to lose a second lap. He'll make a pass on Casey Kane. That's going to open the door up for Johnson. Now we know Kane's on the lead lap. Maybe not for long. Casey might have to be the first driver to lap down now, and he will be as Johnson will lap Casey Kane. And now he works underneath Harvick. 100 laps to go, 300 laps complete out of 400 today at Richmond. Johnson continues to dominate as he clears Harvick off turn two now. Johnson trying to get his first win in this Pride of America paint scheme. Only the second race he's ran with it this season. But it would definitely be a nice win. Still has Lowe's as a sponsorship for this race. He will have Lowe's on the car throughout the course of the season. He doesn't have any other sponsorships until Ally Bank comes along in 2019. Jimmy, with, Jimmy Johnson with that longtime title reign as Lowe's as his primary sponsor. It was a full season contract at that for the majority of his NASCAR Cup Series career. Living through all seven of his championships that he will eventually win at this point in time in 2004. He doesn't have one yet. First championship didn't come until 2006. Where he rattled off five in a row from 06 to 2010. One in 2013 and one in 2016 as well. Record Titans set title, seventh title with Richard Petty and Dale Earnhardt Sr. We'll take another jump cut when we come back. Johnson will make his final pit stop of the race, barring a caution leading up to that. You're watching the Chevy 400 for the NASCAR Next L Cup Series at the Richmond Raceway on NASCAR Chase for the Cup 2005 video game live on KRC. Caution is out once again at lap 333, our second caution of the race today in the middle of green flag pit stops once more. 
It looks like a three-car crash. Maybe four cars involved in turn three. Ricky Rudd gets turned around as they were three wide with the 109 and the 191. Kurt Busch might have piled into the back of that, into the back of Ricky Rudd to be exact, and was involved in the accident as well. So Jimmy Johnson will pit under the caution for his final pit stop of the day. As will everybody else who has not pit, which Johnson was scored two laps ahead of the field when that caution had come out because he was the last driver who was originally on the lead lap that did not pit. In case we got another caution in the middle of Dream Flag stops, we did. It's the second time that's happened today. In fact, those were the only time we've had the two yellows up to this point. And Johnson, the big benefactor of it once again, and I'd say even more so now, not only because it's late in the race, but because he was the only driver this time around who still had to make his final stop. And he was going to have to pit within about seven or eight laps, and we were about to cut back to it then. Instead, we cut it back to it now. Rusty Wallace wins the race off pit road on Johnson. He had pit as well, so he'll get another lap back. And a lot of those drivers, I mean, honestly, everybody else basically was able to stay out, get the wave around. So now Johnson's only going to be about one lap ahead of the field instead of two. But he's in a situation where if we stay green to the end of this race, he is in a very prime position to win. The green flag is back in the air again at Richmond following that second caution. Rusty Wallace on equal fresh tires along with Johnson. Johnson stuck on the outside with all these lap cars underneath him getting able to restart on the bottom. Contact with Bobby Labonte off the exit of turn four as Labonte runs Johnson wide. Johnson then pulling a block on Michael Waltrip getting into turns one and two. Back to the inside of Lovani. Kevin Harvick had blown an engine as well. And Dale Jr. was in second place, I do believe, before that caution, or at least before the pit stops under the yellow. I'm not sure where he cycled after that. Whoever's one lap down, the first driver lap down, if we get another yellow, we'll get the free pass and get back on the lead lap. So this race is not all over yet. Johnson has made his third and final stop of the day. He will not have to pit again. And honestly, with this kind of a lead. He doesn't want to pit and give everybody the wave around. So we get another caution. I'm pretty sure he's going to stay out again. Even if everybody else decides to pit just to keep them a lap down. We are 60 laps away from the finish of this race. Let's see if we stay green to the end. Ryan Newman is really pulled away. Johnson was able to get back by the two dodges of Rusty Wallace and Casey Kane. Kane's had a great show once again here under the lights at Richmond. Another night race for the next points race of the season. It will be the Coke 600. That will be a live stream on the Thursday following this premiere that you guys are watching on this late Sunday morning into early Sunday afternoon before the start of that Talladega playoff race for the NASCAR Cup Series. Definitely taking this line away from Johnson for the moment. And Jimmy's got nobody to contest behind him. Definitely going to make his life a little bit easier.
definitely made this day even easier. Johnson was one of pretty much the only driver that won the race to stay green to the end, but all the other lead lap cars pitting. Now Kyle Petty has an issue. He'll blow an engine. Ryan Newman checked up, and that's the third time now Johnson has gotten into the back of another driver who was checked up because somebody had blown an engine on the inside of the track. Third time, hopefully the last in this race. Second time it's happened in the last 50 laps. Speaking of 50 laps, we'll have 50 to go here in a couple more. And this race stays green. Johnson has it won. There is no way anybody is going to run him down with this one lap lead on the field. Again, he was not a lap ahead. He was about 15 seconds ahead of second place when we got into the third set of pit stops today under green but the caution came out in the middle of him again and literally Johnson was the only car that still had to pit he had a 15 second lead so he had time that the second place car was probably going to cut into that deficit on Johnson but just in case we got a yellow it was basically going basically to win the race for Jimmy Hinn. it certainly has pretty much all but won this race assuming Johnson just makes it to the end what a dominating performance it it's kind of fitting that it's going to work out that a Chevy is going to win the Chevy 400, barring something catastrophic here for Johnson. Now, we have seen two Hendrick, Hendrick Chevrolets blow an engine today, Jeff Gordon, and then very early in the race, Brian Vickers. Terry Labonte and Jimmy Johnson, the only two Hendrick Chevys that are still running. Johnson, obviously, the leader. And he just wants to get to that checkered flag as soon as possible at this point. Really, the white flag, because no cautions come out in the final lap the NASCAR EA Sports video game. Johnson would like to run Ryan Newman back down again if he could help it. Another car two laps down. I have no clue where anybody else in the running order is outside of the race leader we know is Jimmy Johnson. And the fact that we have had four drivers that have blown an engine. I don't know who one of them is. Actually, five drivers who have blown an engine. Now that I think about it, but there was one driver who did not see who it was. We know Kyle Petty, Ryan Vickers, Kevin Harvick, and Jeff Gordon are all done for the day. Petty and the Dodge, the other three I mentioned were Chevys. And Harvick was having a pretty solid day. Him and Gordon were both in the top five the last we saw of them, but not anymore. And they were not able to get any laps led either for bonus points, so it's definitely going to be a rough point today for both of those two. Kevin Harvick in the top half of the field. Uh, of the drivers who are chase eligible as of right now. Gordon was also chase eligible, so it's two potential future chase drivers having an issue. You don't know about Vickers. He was just outside the cutoff line coming into the race today, a few spots outside the cutoff line. But well in contention to still be one of the 10 drivers that could qualify for the championship in those final 10 races of the season. Again, this will be the inaugural chase season. First every year that the chase slash now what we know of playoffs was in 2004. This is the 2004 video game, 2004 season. I know it's titled NASCAR Chase for the Cup 2005, but they kind of like that the EA games, uh, not just with NASCAR, but any of the EA games are always kind of like a year ahead, almost like a car uh, where it's, you know, released to the public. And it'll be like a new car will be like 2022, even though it's 2021. I never understood why that is the case. Somebody can explain it down in the chat. Maybe I'll be in the chat at this point in time. I'll likely be in the chat throughout most of the race. 
can all but guarantee it. Well, 40 laps to go. Then still running a pretty good pace right now, trying to stay ahead of Johnson. Not 100% sure, but I would think that would put him in third. Ugh, I really don't know, honestly, at this point. Who's how many laps down? I thought the first caution randomized things. That second caution randomized things even more. And Multiply Johnson is one lap ahead of the field. We'll make our final jump cut of the race. We'll come back in about a dozen laps for the finish. You're watching the Chevy 400 at Richmond. On the NASCAR Chase for the Cup 2005 video game live on KRC. 25 laps to go in the Chevy 400 at Richmond live on KRC. Jimmy Johnson continues to lead by one lap. Still two cautions in this race. and He still has not quite caught Ryan Newman. Been behind him every lap after the restart. We've been green for well over 20 to 25 laps now. And Newman's definitely showing some good speed, although Johnson has been a little bit faster the last few laps and has finally started to kind of close that gap. Newman going to try to keep himself where he's at in the running order, maybe give him a chance at a better finish, being maybe an extra lap ahead of a lot of the other drivers who are multiple laps down. Newman only one lap down as we run. That 12 car, Johnson just got to be smart when he gets to Ryan Newman, assuming he will get there eventually. And these two will catch some much heavier lap traffic as well at some point. Uh, the slower lap traffic, that is. That's just got to be patient as he has through most of the day. That is definitely something that has helped lead him to this dominance. On top of the fast race car, of course. Especially that most timely yellow. Really, both the cautions were timely for Jimmy Johnson's sake. The second more so than the first, but he would still be on the right side of both cautions. While leading the race as it is for most of the day, that just helps Johnson more and more. 20 laps to go now. He's all over the back of Brian Newman as they enter into turn one. So would like to put Newman another lap down, but I'm sure Newman's going to really fight for it. Obviously, we have seen Newman has a pretty fast car. Johnson will get under him off the exit of turn number four. This car kind of dripped up the race shack on the inside of Newman. And clear off turn two with a clean pass. Well, his textbook for Jimmy Johnson didn't take him long at all, and he made it as cleanly as he possibly could have. Not just trying to work and get away from the 12. And getting to his first slower car during this green flag run in the 151 car. A little bit of a gap before the next driver, who would be Robbie Gordon and Jeff Burton, it looks like. At least Robbie Gordon. Can't tell if that's Jeff Burton or not. I saw a 9 up there. It looked like a Rosh Fenway 9, but that'd be one of the generated drivers, too. It's really hard to tell with the graphics. Maybe the 198 car if it's not. Jeff Burton. Actually, I don't even know if this is 198. We'll see as we get closer. we got 15 to go. I'm sure we'll get close enough at some point. And if we don't, oh well. At least Jimmy Johnson's just going to cruise the victory. No, we'll catch him at some point. It is the 198 car. It was not Jeff Burton after all. Ricky Craven in front of him. 
slate in the race. They may not let Johnson go, especially Jimmy having as big of a lead as he is. I think they're just going to battle it out for their positions on the track. These drivers just trying to qualify for the playoffs. The chase, if you would. How historic it would be to be a nine in the inaugural chase class as well for these drivers. So custom schedule season, we're not going to have a chase. It's going to be a season-long points format. Three wide action in the corner. 198 makes a pass on Ricky Craven. Johnson clears them both off the exit of turn four now. And now the 198 going to try to cross Johnson over in turns one and two. Johnson on the high side got a great run off the exit of the corner. Beats the 198 back to the bottom again. And he'll stay in front of him off the exit of turn four. Scott Wimmer going to give Johnson a bunch of room after Johnny Sauter just passed Wimmer. There's two rookies possibly battling for a spot. Oh, Johnson pulled up a little early before making his arc off into turn three on Wimmer. Maybe fatigue starting to set in now that we're only 10 laps left in this 400-lap race. Johnson's just got to stay focused here to the end. He's almost got the job done. A little bump to the left rear of Johnny Sauter as well. That third time, the 30 and the 48 have made contact on the racetrack. Johnson gets around to nine more laps remain. We'll have one attempt at a green-white checker if we do get a caution before the white flag comes out. Remember, Johnson started at the pole when the day began. For you guys in the late morning hours, even on the East Coast. Johnson takes it three wide into turn three under the 122 and the 01. As the cars above Johnson will merge off the exit of turn four, allowing everybody to make the corner. Play as compact with the lap traffic as we're seeing here late. Compared to most of the times Johnson has caught lap traffic following a caution on the initial start of the race. Whipple about to lose another lap. Five to go at Richmond. Three wide again down the back straightaway into turn three. Johnson really loose on the bottom. Contact up with the high side. And the 191's in the wall. He got clipped by somebody else. Four laps to go at the line, but we do stay green. That could have been our third caution of the race. And now Marlin is going to dive bomb underneath Johnson into turn one. We've seen more contact late with the 48 of Johnson than what we saw the entire race leading up to it. Johnson fends Marlin off another corner. Three laps to go. Johnson trying to pick that pace back up following that contact a couple laps to go because he wants to get to that white flag and just get this thing over with. Two to go this time by. They make their way off turn four. Johnson's teammate Terry Labonte going to let him go off the exit of the corner. And make life maybe a little easier for Johnson. Johnson needs that break compared to the last dozen or so laps he's had up to this point. There's a 109 off the exit to turn two. White flag in the air off turn four. One lap to go. And the 192 right in front of him. Down to the inside of him, no other lap cars in front of that for a long time. 
One final time into turns three and four. Johnson is clear, and Jimmy Johnson will win the Chevy 400 at Richmond. A little bit of damage on the front of the race car. Not too much, but... More than really what he would have liked. Some of that was in the closing laps, and most of that was those three times that we had checkups after drivers had blown an engine earlier in the race. And Jimmy Johnson just going to do a Polish victory lap for his celebration here today at Richmond. In front of the fans who are entertained here this afternoon. Take a look at the unofficial results to today's race. Dale Jr. ended up second place. The only driver one lap down. Of course, Johnson had a one lap lead on the field at the end of the race, leading 398 of the 400 laps. The only two laps that were not led by him were led by Casey Kane under a caution flag. In fact, the first yellow just after 100 laps into the race. Uh, Dale Jr. ends up second, though. Ryan Newman ended up third, as we mentioned. Rusty Wallace, his teammate, right behind him in fourth. And Casey Kane, the rookie who led two laps, had a strong day finishing and rounding out the top five. Elliot Sadler, sixth. Seventh was Bobby Labonte. Michael Waltrip, eighth. Jeff Burton, ninth. And Ricky Rudd rounds out the top ten. Drivers who failed to finish this race, we know four of them. Not sure who that other driver was or if there were any more. We saw, obviously, somebody blew an engine towards the end there, too. I couldn't tell who it was. Uh, Brian Vickers, Randy Norton. Jeff Gordon, Kevin Harvick, Kyle Petty. And uh, I guess those were the only drivers that did blow an engine. So those were the five drivers that failed to finish the race. So I didn't see Norton blow an engine earlier on. But, uh, that was it for the drivers who failed to finish. Two hours, 34 minutes on the race here today. Not bad. Only two cautions for incident. Like, share, and subscribe for more daily NASCAR content. I'll see you guys for the live stream Talladega later on, uh, not too far after the end of this premiere live stream of live commentary for the actual race there. Uh, make sure you tune in. Hit that like button along the way. And I will see you guys for that. Thanks for watching this premiere. Catch you next time.